it would just be most about it. the noise you know the noise it was always lit as we would say you saw some tough love having fun all kinds of things Whew. In a pandemic, pandemic teaching has definitely been a challenge. I think that in the beginning when we first started out and we were first told to leave the school, everybody was in a frenzy and no one knew what was gonna happen next. I can pretty much say everybody was struggling in the fall. Students and teachers, administrators, the everyone. Hey everyone, I just wanna show you my virtual setup. Behind me is my computer. And over here is pencils and notebooks. Here is the second screen. Getting two screens is a necessity in virtual learning. Snacks, of course. I need my snacks. And what teachers love the most, coffee. I mean, that is about it. In a regular year, we do concentrate on supporting the whole child because we're really grounded in SEL as well as restorative practices. But for this year, it's just making sure that those basic needs are met. We want our families to know that you have a communication access to say, this was going on with me. How can Baloo support me while I'm here at this state? And once we learn your story, we try to figure out how we can work with you through your story to let you be successful. I have an amazing staff. My staff is very resilient and they are professional. Our staff have really put on their virtual boots and also their virtual helmet and has taken the pandemic by storm. So this year is always going to be strange. Moving into my first year of teaching, I didn't really know what to expect. Going virtual has absolutely shattered any kind of expectations I had before. And I was nervous for Mr. Ramirez because I could just see the fear in him. I was just like, oh my, is he going to last? But I was definitely scared for him. <laughs> Ms. Scott and I will definitely coach all through that because that is definitely not an easy process. And I think some of you have already started working on what you're going to say for each slide. So I think we're in a good spot. When the school year first started, I had to pick up technology and learn how to use it and know when to get to classes and when classes were in. So that was kind of uncomfortable for me, especially because it's virtually. It was also difficult because I couldn't really build relationships with my teacher. I think the biggest thing to solve in virtual learning has been building relationships. And I didn't feel like I was that amazing at it to start. But what I had was I had the secret weapon. I had Miss Scott in my classroom. I got to see her at work day after day. She's my teacher. I'm her student, and so I've learned a ton from her. Yeah, I graduated at Four Cups this morning. I did Four Cups of Coffee. Four Cups? Yeah, I may be in the hospital by the end of the year. We'll see. You turn into a, you turn into a regular yeah. teacher. Even though I chose Blue for sports, I decided to stay here because the teachers, they support you and they really care about you. And I had a lot of family go here. My mother, brothers and sisters, and mostly aunts and uncles. My uncle graduated from Baloo, then me and my cousin. It was an honor when she chose Baloo. They had a commitment day, and we just knew she was this other school, but she shocked us all and chose Baloo. I thought like it would be good for me, because you know, everybody, they already know my family and stuff, so I'm having like a lot of support. But it was definitely a challenge. They always challenged me, and it helped me take on challenges. Now I'm working in a hospital, and I'm studying to get my CNA right now, so. We are a family. Inside of this school, you have people, you have staff members who actually were students here, who built up, went out in the career force and came back and now they're giving back. That says a lot about the school. That says a lot about a tradition. And I want to be a part of a history, something like that. Beautiful, gorgeous. I've never seen a high school like this. I think I was amazed when I first got here. I thought I was in the wrong spot. It looks like a college campus. And the football field's beautiful. There's a huge swimming pool. It's a great place to work for sure. Um, and so we get in here, and then this is where we do our, our temperature check. Can I check your temperature? Yes. Do you have cough? No. Sore throat? Mm -mm. Diarrhea? No. Shortness of breath? Mm -mm. All right, thank you. Uh, thank you. What do you think of virtual school? I think I, I like it a lot because I can get my work done faster and I don't have any distractions. For some of them, virtual works for them. They need to be at home without distractions of people in the school building. But for some, it doesn't work. And so I know that a lot of teachers are definitely looking for more and more students to actually get to that point where they're actually talking about what they're doing instead of just, you know, writing it down on a Desmos or on a Nearpod or even worse, not doing anything. And so the key here is getting students to unmute. What I do, the way to get kids to unmute is to ask them to unmute. Okay, thank you, Ms. Brown. So my second period, I'm gonna do a mic check. Stuart, can you unmute? Here. Perfect. Spirit, can you unmute? 
here. Sweet, and I see you. Montez, can you unmute? Mira, Mira, can you unmute? And then Capri. Stacy, can you unmute? It's definitely important to hear them. And I love the way that you force those kids. Hey, come off mute. Too, yeah. Unmute, unmute, unmute. And you know, so now they're used to it. I say, you need to unmute. I tag them in chat. I bother them. If that doesn't work, I call their phone. Hey, Mr. Jones, how's it going? Good. When you get in, obviously we are working on our PowerPoint. I want you to focus on our recommendation. Okay? Okay. All right, sweet. This year is the year that we're putting the implementation on these redesigned ideas that our community tells us, this is what we want at our school, this is what we need. And we did our best to bring that here through our program. So we knew going into this that we wanted to have a instructional program or programming offerings that targeted both college and career readiness. And so we continued to plan 3DE, leveraging our CTE pathways and our healing center practices would look like, but the pandemic hit right in the middle of March. And so what we had originally planned for in a brick and mortar setting absolutely had to be pivoted into a virtual setting. Our three big bets, first and foremost, we're doing 3DE with case study methodology. So our students have an opportunity with the 3DE model to actually engage with industry partners as well as work with professionals to reiterate problems for each company. I think there's a really strong culture here of collaboration and innovation. And obviously 3DE is one of the new exciting things that Blue is all about. And so, you know, this is definitely the kind of environment that I want to be in and that I want to grow in as a teacher. This school year, it was kind of hard because it's virtual and I wanted to be in the school building, but then I got used to it. And then now I'm starting to get better grades and stuff. In 3D, we team up with groups and we do case challenges and find solutions to business problems. And the case challenges, I, I would recommend doing them because they're really fun and competitive. Like, you get to meet new teammates and stuff like that. And you also have fun with, like, gathering information. And they can really help your thinking skills and, and teamwork skills. Good morning, first. And today we're going to be talking about the Orbeez Case Challenge. My name is Kyrie. And I want you to meet my teammates from Team Ranch. Recommendation number one. From the survey data, 80% of people did not see the company Arby's on social media. My drum roll if you all can hear it. So the winning team is going to be team number three, Team Ramirez. Wow, Team Ramirez, we finally got one. I'm so proud of y'all. I'm so I'm so excited. I started screaming once I heard the decision. When we got selected, everybody was just happy and surprised because we didn't think we would win. But yeah, I, I like being on that team because everybody communicated with each other. 3DE fosters collaboration. 3DE fosters critical thinking skills and team building skills to be successful. Because at first I was, I was kind of nervous. I didn't want to participate because I didn't know the classmates that was in my group. But now you see kids, like they're coming to class more, coming to their groups, participating, and coming up with good ideas, just letting their personality express themselves in there. So the growth we've seen, and not just in Treasure, I'd say across many of our students is confidence as they've built relationships with students and teachers, but also as they have had practice to do these different case challenges. And we're excited to see what next year is gonna look like when they're not just gonna present on a camera screen about what their resolutions are, but in front of the actual business companies in their headquarters in the brick and mortar next year. We have a winner that's team number three, Cashed Out Nights. We did it! We did it! Yeah, yeah, we okay. 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 You can probably tell I've been crying because I'm beyond proud of my team. I'm just so proud of them. We worked so hard. I worried them to death. They worried me to death. But all of that, it just pays off. Yeah, how much do you pay the judges? Oh, I didn't pay the judges. <laughs> I, I don't know what to say, but we did not pay the judges at all. <laughs> opportunity for them to come out and see their faces and see who they are. They can also engage the teachers and still continue to try to build relationships. That's one of our biggest things here at Baloo. We're really big on relationships, so we're just trying to foster opportunities for kids to come out and build relationships. So today we had our Black History Month pull-up. Every month we want to really have an opportunity to connect with students, especially in this virtual environment. So we try to get different organizations, different partners to come together. We invite also colleges and universities up, as well as the military branches to come up 
and share some exciting ideas and possibilities for our students. Today is our CTE week pull up. And so we are having a celebration uh, for CTE month, which is career and technical education. And what makes CTE so special is being able to work hands in hand with what you're gonna do in the real world. And so that's been a challenge for us in this virtual space. And so having opportunities like this to recognize, celebrate with students how they persevered, that they've stuck with it, that they keep going um, in the future that lasts with CTE and what can come with it, it's been really cool to see. One of our other big bets is leveraging our CTE pathways. What that means is students at Baloo and across the city have an opportunity to engage in our career technical education pathways, where when they graduate from high school, they have an opportunity to go straight into college or career with an additional credential. We have four, we have culinary, we have hospitality, our new computer engineering and IT, and we have automotive. And one of the great things that we have been able to implement this year under the ownership of Ms. Cunningham is Pedagogy Academy, which I definitely think our Pedagogy Academy has helped a brand new teacher who's never taught before. And then virtually trying to figure out what's a great way to engage them still using pedagogy. Our main goal was to make sure that we can get our students certified and that make sure that our teachers are actually teaching what needs to be taught based on what will be on the test and based on what they would need in the future when they go out into the workforce. So that's what Pedagogy Academy was for. It's been really exciting just, just to see the growth and to see how proud that they were when they were able to get 47 students certified. I'm about to do my hospitality test for certification. Not to you log in. I'm going to go to this website right here and get started. All right, Treasure, tell us, what did you just learn? I just got an 87 on my test. She has the top score of all of our hospitality students. Yay. So she just received her certification pin. She will get that in the mail, and it will say that she is guest service gold certified. Amazing. <laughs> Congratulations, Treasure. Big day for you. Yes, congrats. Yes. I am proud of you. I'm so happy. What excites me the most is watching students make connections to the real world. Those credentials that students receive that are applicable for them beyond high school, where they're getting paid above minimum wage, where they're having that industry experience, makes learning real. So for Redesign, we are a team. We have 3DE, we have CTE, and we also bring it into our classrooms with our circles, and we just really connect and make it more like a family. One of our specific big bets was creating healing center practices through circle keeping practices. And what that means is simply is before we dive in straight into the academics, it's important to get to know our students, especially because we're starting the school year off without knowing them. Our teachers before class starts, they'll have two or three questions lined up. It just allows those opportunities to check in on the student before checking in on the academics. Healing center practice has been challenging trying to connect with the heart in a virtual setting. Our staff has really done a great job of figuring out how the best way to connect, how to communicate, how to engage with our students. But this is how the slide actually looks. You know, how are you doing? And they're pretty much used to this virtual circle um, because again, we do it each and every day. I'm almost certain that I started that class that day with a circle. It was a day when a student had lost her mom the previous day and she came to class. She shared with the entire class what happened. So not only did she come off camera and come off mute, but then other students started to come off camera and come off mute and to support this student. You know, it, it broke me down to tears. I, I think all of us was up there crying. It just showed me how important it is to have this job because at that moment, she needed her support. You know, the kids were definitely supporting her. A lot of kids came off camera that day to mm -hmm. offer support, and it was a, the first time I saw some of them, but whoo, that was an emotional day for me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that that day, it became like an opportunity to build this family in the class because everyone was supportive, nobody was disrespectful. Healing Center practice is something that's gonna be ongoing as we are getting back into the building to ensure that we're working with the whole child. 
And when they leave Baloo, they feel like they felt loved, supported, and also engaged. And I'm so excited that we have come together to create such a beautiful space for learning to take place, for community to come together and work together to make sure our students are successful in life. So I cannot wait to have school fully open again. Looking forward to that. I'm definitely the most proud of the relationships we were able to build with a lot of the students, Ms. Scott and I. So I think Ms. Scott and I were really strategic in how we built out you know, the social aspects of our classrooms. And we had a lot of students by the end of it. And they all promised me that they, come August 30th, Ms. Scott and I, we're gonna be the first teachers they come see. So I'm, I'm very excited to see a lot of them again. See, the funny thing is like all these kids, they talk a ton of trash online. And when they come in person, they're all shy. <laughs> come on, say something on camera. Look at that, he's gotta act like he's on a phone call. Well, I feel like, you know, teaching in the pandemic has definitely been a, a learning experience. And if it wasn't for this experience, you know, now I feel like I can teach anything. I kind of miss getting up, you know, preparing to leave for the day, interacting face to face with my students. So yeah, I prefer in person because I miss the students that I teach, the students that I used to teach. I really, really do miss them. I think I would choose in person. I kind of had enough of virtual now. I really want to see so many people that used to go to school with me and I want to make new friends. I can't make new friends over, or, over um, a computer. I miss this hallway though, definitely. All the noise and... Uh... Well, I'll get it all back next year.